Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show where angels fear to tread. Now, Doug Millar had some problems and couldn't do the show today, but I was scheduled to be his guest. And in case you don't recognize my voice, <laughs> I am Clay Douglas. I'm the Free American, and I was scheduled to be Doug's guest today. So, a little bit of an unusual situation, but, uh, hey, what the hell. <laughs> I guess I can interview myself, and, and maybe that'd work. Now, <laughs> what uh, Doug wanted to talk about was Donna Taylor. Donna and Mark Taylor. The situation, maybe, uh, maybe you don't know who Mark Taylor is. Mark Taylor was the first student shot at Columbine High School. The first student. Shot seven times and left to lay there for two hours with bullets whizzing over his head. Ignored by the police. And he lay there bleeding for a couple hours. But Mark's a fighter and Mark lived. Then uh, I did a story on Mark. I had Donna Taylor. Mark got to be. Mark got to be. Uh, by the way, let me let me tell you. If you want to, if you want to call in, if you want to talk to me, I will take calls. I don't know how Doug uh, works it, but if you want to call in, you can call in on my Skype line at five two zero four one three. 2397. That's 520-413-2397. I've been broadcasting for almost 20 years now. I've interviewed thousands of the most extremists, the most radical, the most patriotic people in the world. And I've been demonized, hunted, attacked, de uh, and, and over and over again I've been demonized for trying to tell you the truth. I started the militias after Waco. I helped start the militias. And I, uh, I got I got listed in the ADL, that's the Anti-Defamation League. I got listed in their armed and dangerous brochure, and they put out a few million copies. And they told you I was anti-government. Well, they told you I started the militias around the country. And they made that sound like a bad thing. Well, I don't think it was a bad thing at all. I think that starting the militias after Waco was exactly what we needed to do, what our founding fathers told us to do, and what we should have done. On my show a few uh, few weeks ago, I had on Governor Gary Johnson, former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, and. Gary was governor when we started the militias. When I started the Free American Magazine, and if you go to my website, which is freeamerican.com, you can hear the show I did with Gary. I I discussed it with him. He knew that the militias weren't no any terrorist, any threat. That we were there at his beck and call. At his beck and call. We, the governor, could call up the militia at any time. And the militia is every able-bodied American male between the ages of 18 and 45. So, am I anti-government? Possibly. 
if our constitutional republic that was guaranteed us by the uh, Constitution, a republican form of government, if that's been replaced with two wolves and a sheep communist democracy, then you're damn right I'm anti-government. I am anti-tyranny. I'm anti-lying. And that's why I am the free American, and I've been speaking out for the American people. I spoke out for the on behalf of the Branch Davidians. I interviewed the Branch Davidians that survived. I have been fighting for the American people, our way of life, since I took the same oath that all of our law enforcement, all of our soldiers, all of our FBI, all of our police take to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And just because I am no longer in the Army doesn't mean there was an expiration date on that oath. When I ran with, uh, when I worked with Charles Collins in 1996, Charles Collins was the first Republican to sign up for the presidency to run uh, against Clinton. And you may not have heard of Charles Collins because every day, every time we, uh, we went into the Republican conventions and every time he got up to speak in two states they unplugged his microphone and in every state every cameraman on stage turned the cameras off and pointed them at the ground turned them off and pointed them at the ground so most people never heard of Charles Collins now It seems that there is a high mortality rate seems like there's a high mortality rate for the people that have been on my show now I do the show at freeamerican.com I do it on blog talk on blog TV on crusade every morning so quite possible that you heard some of them. But recently I had on uh, a few months back I had on Edgar Steele. Now Edgar Steele was the uh, man that defended the Christies. They had their kids taken from them and tried to take them back in Oregon. He defended Richard Butler's Aryan Nations. Hell of a lawyer. Lawyer for the doomed, he called himself. Because, um, well, he wasn't too successful. The ADL outspent him, outmaneuvered him, and they hated Edgar Steele. So after he was on my show, suddenly he had a handyman that was an FBI informant who went and stole $50,000, $45,000 worth of silver from him while building cabinets. And then went to the FBI and said, yeah, Edgar gave me that to, to, to kill his wife. And he tried to kill Edgar Steele's wife and Edgar Steele by planting a couple of bombs in their trucks and their vehicles. They didn't explode and they did find them. But with the ADL pushing the Homeland Security and the FBI, they charged him with hiring a hitman to uh, kill his wife. Now Cindy Steele was on my show. And she believes that he was set up. She believes he, he is totally innocent. And her attorney feels the same thing. Feels the same way. 
I had Roger Christie from the THC Ministries of Hawaii. I met Roger through my son who joined the, uh, his church, THC Ministries in Hawaii, while he was in college. I had Roger Christie on my show, and Roger went to jail. No bond. No bond. And he's still being held. Now, just to, to try to help you understand what is happening here, I met Donna Taylor in New Mexico where she and her son Mark Taylor first student shot at Columbine, shot seven times the bullets uh, missed vital organ one remains embedded in his body near his spine Mark and uh, his mother Donna Taylor believed the actions of the shooters Dylan Claybold and Eric Harris were directly related to the antidepressant pharmaceuticals they were being given Mark appeared in film Bowling at Columbine by Michael Moore. Moore also used him in a publicity campaign to force Kmart to stop selling ammunition in Colorado. Shamefully, Moore paid Mark nothing for his involvement. But miraculously, Mark had a full recovery, went on a book tour, wrote a book, testified before the FBA, FDA, and was interviewed on numerous television broadcasts. Attorney John DeCamp, former Senator John DeCamp, handled a lawsuit against the pharmaceutical companies, and that went nowhere. That went nowhere. Why? Because Mark Taylor brought a lawsuit against Solvay, the international pharmaceutical company that produces Luvox. Taylor's 2001 lawsuit, lawsuit said Luvox had caused Harris to become maniac, psychotic, homicidal, suicidal, and had brought about emotional blunting or a lack of inhibition. Taylor's lawsuit also faulted Solvay for failing to warn of the risks and dangers associated with the drugs. In early 1998, According to Taylor's lawsuit, Harris had taken Zoloft for two months, but soon became obsessional. Harris became obsessed with homicidal and suicidal thoughts within weeks after he began taking Zoloft, according to uh, Dr. Ann Blake Tracy, who was also on my show. Due, due to his shooting, his, uh, due, due to his obsession with killing, Harris was switched to Luvox, which was in his system at the time of the shooting, according to his autopsy. The change from Zoloft to Luvox is like switching from Pepsi to Coke, according to Dr. Ann Blake Tracy. Taylor told the American Free Press how two years after the Columbine shooting, as a 17-year-old recovering victim, he had been taken alone without counsel into a room with lawyers representing Solvay and threatened with court costs and countersuits. The fear of financial ruin, ruin led Taylor and others to withdraw the lawsuit. The legal setback, however, has not stopped Taylor from uh, working to increase public awareness about the dangers of the SSRI medications. I didn't realize what an epidemic it was until I went with Dr. Tracy and heard all the testimony, Taylor said. Mark's mother, Donna, said she had seen tarantulas on the ceilings of snakes coming out of my mouth, hallucinations she had suffered while taking Paxil. Another pharmaceutical, big pharma poison. She said racing thoughts had prevented her from sleeping and she had not recognized her closest family members when they entered her home. And then there was a contrived incident in a mall that resulted in Mark being committed to a mental hospital facility where he was dosed with psychotropic drugs. In 2009, in a, in a film that they did on him. He was very disconnected, almost almost in a zombie-like state. Well, I talked with Donna Taylor about this, met her in New Mexico. 
still doing, had her on my show. And she came through. I moved from New Mexico into Arizona. She came to see me here in Tucson, Arizona. As she was leaving, Mark was ill, having some reactions to some methane gas poisoning that they, they experienced in their home in uh, New Mexico. They came through to see me. On their way out, they stopped in an emergency room in Phoenix. And that was where the real nightmare for Mark and his mother was just beginning. Mark was lucky to have survived the shooting, but he was also vocal, outspoken, and unafraid. His involvement with Michael Moore may have had a positive effect on our understanding of the events as a whole. As a whole. According to Howard Pankridge of the Denver Post in 2006, Mark Taylor is a living miracle. He said despite the trauma and years of the past, Mark Taylor still vividly remembers the day he was shot as many as 13 times outside Columbine High School. On Tuesday, Taylor recalls standing outside the school enjoying a nice spring day with friends when a bullet slammed into his legs. In the next second, he saw a bullet slam into the face of a friend, and he felt several bullets rip into his own chest. I was stunned, he said. I wasn't quite sure what had happened. I could see out of the sides of my eyes the government go over and shoot Rachel Scott. Now, Taylor wants to be a pastor, and a book he's written has spiritual overtones. It's called I Ask God Answered a Columbine Miracle. Taylor, then 22, recounts the horror of that day in the recovery that has required multiple surgeries, initial hospital stay of two months, and the anguish of having tubes thrust down his throat, tubes placed in his side. The horror of what I went through in the hospital, I can't even put in words, said Taylor, who was shot by Harris on April 20, 1999. But the book is about forgiveness. He has forgiven shooters, Harris and Dylan Klebold, and their families. He's talked to gang members, Vietnam veterans, about forgiveness. He said especially... He especially remembers the Vietnam vets who have spent 30 years of blaming the government for the friends they lost. Some have thanked him for the message. After hearing me on forgiveness and healing, it was able to help them, he said. But on the 10th anniversary of the Columbine shooting, Donna and Mark Taylor gave an interview, and this video documents after... His documents his shocking decline after being forcibly hospitalized and treated with psychiatric drugs, drugs in 2006 after the interview you just heard with Howard. Mark used to be coherent, gave television interviews, and he was able to drive himself, but suddenly he uh, was in a very disconnected, zombie-like state. And you can see that video of him and how it changed him on my website, freeamerican.com. Then, he was picked up in the emergency room and illegally detained and dug, and this time, for over a year, he was, he was declared an incapacitated person. Why? He was fine when he came through to see me. And Donna Taylor spent three months in Phoenix trying to get him out. She wasn't able to. So she came back to me. She came back to me. And, uh... She said, Clay, you know, what can I do? And I gave her some suggestions. 
call the police, call the sheriff's department, call the FBI, contact the newspapers, contact the television stations, contact all them. And yes, Mark lived and through Columbine and then he was taken in Phoenix and put in and held they got they tried to get the state tried to get guardianship the medical facility tried to get guardianship the judges were right in the medical facility and they tried to keep him and they started drugging him again with some horrible more of these horrible medications now I can relate to this, folks. I can relate to this because the same thing happened to me, or almost happened to me. The same thing was tried on me. And when he was in the, the, the little uh, mental institution up in Colorado, a doctor came to Donna and said, they're going to kill Mark. You need to get him out of here. And so she left to go to New Mexico. Then she came to Arizona to see me. Then she went to Phoenix, put him in an emergency room, and they kept him. She tried to contact the police. She tried to contact the sheriff's department. She tried to contact the FBI. She contacted all the newspapers, all the radio stations in Phoenix. She contact she contacted, wrote a letter to the governor. Nobody would do anything. Now I mentioned Edgar Steele. I mentioned the fact that Edgar Steele, same thing done to him. And it's not the first time there was a, the case of Paul Pantone who did the Geek device, who was a good friend of mine for 25 years, one of the most sane, intelligent, brilliant people that I know, could build a, built a carburation system that would allow you to get uh, 30 or 40 miles to the gallon that uh, would allow you to even run your vehicle off of water or motor oil or just about any damn thing. And uh, they picked him up and put him in an insane asylum for three and a half years. It took us three and a half years to get Paul Pantone out of a mental institution because he refused to sign over the patch on his GEET device. Now, Paul was just on my show too, and he talked about that. And you can go to freeamerican.com and you can see all of these shows. All you got to do is click on the name of my guest and you can hear the show. Donna couldn't get a lawyer to help, couldn't get a police to help, couldn't get uh, anyone to help. But I found Wesley Hoyt, who was working with uh, Cindy, Cindy Steele, Edgar Steele's wife. He was representing her. And he agreed to help her. Because of his efforts and another lawyer here in Phoenix, they put enough, and, and we had people, I wrote this story basically that I've just given you, shared with you. I put that story in Veterans Today. And we got him out. We got him out. That was about two weeks ago. He is now in Colorado, back in Colorado with his mother. They got a new place in Denver uh, so they can be near their attorneys. And they are considering lawsuits to sue the medical facility that held him illegally, criminally practically. They, they did that. 
They got him out. I went on with a number of groups. I worked with the veterans groups and I worked with a group called Sons of Liberty Riders that I had joined here. They wanted to support the Constitution, wanted to make a difference here. As you know, I've started the militias, I worked with the militias and support our right to their, certainly their right to exist. And, uh, I asked for their help. Help me get Mark out. Help me. Help me. Let's protest right to the right to the. And then suddenly, I was kicked off of Sons of Liberty Riders. Kicked off because one woman decided I wasn't telling the whole story. I wasn't telling the pharmaceutical companies. I wasn't telling the medical facilities side of the story and. They don't put people in these institutions without without some reason, without a good reason. They got a reason to put those people in there. To which my response was basically bullshit. Because folks, this is what they tried to do to me. Remember, I published the Free American magazine and I have been doing this Free American broadcast for almost 20 years. I was on shortwave with my friend Bill Cooper. They tried to kill him. They killed him in 2001. Set him up. About a week after he and I decided to put our magazines together, his Veritas and My Free American, we were going to work together. And they, uh, they killed him. Back in 2004, I came out with the story of building number seven on the cover of Free American Magazine. I had Larry Silverstein's quote, yeah, me and the fire department poll decided to pull building number seven. And I pointed out, if you pull building number seven, Mr. Silverstein, you had to have explosive planted in it before 9-11, and if you had explosive planted in that one, gee, what are the odds that you had explosive planted in the other two? Because no high-rise office building in history has ever fallen from the heat of the flames at the top of the building, not at the bottom of the building. I also pointed out that uh, There were explosions, people injured from explosions in the basement before the plane hit because I interviewed William Rodriguez. One woman in, one woman in uh, Sons of Liberty Riders took issue with me and ended up getting me kicked out of Sons of Liberty Riders. Nobody ever showed up to help with Mark Taylor. Nobody ever did nothing. And I was suddenly booted. Now maybe it was just a coincidence that this so-called motorcycle accident that I had occurred right after George Bush allowed two Israeli companies to tap everybody's cell phones. Mine may have been the, one of the first ones they tapped. I called, I made the mistake of calling home in Phoenix, asking my son, where do you need me to go next, son? Where are you, Dad? I'm on the north side of Phoenix, in Sacred Skin Tattoo Parlor. Oh, go down 24th Street to McDowell, turn left, go to the wheel shop. It's right there. Thanks, son. See you later. Two blocks before I got to McDowell. I was hit by a woman in a borrowed car with no insurance, no driver's license, no permanent residence, drug charges pending, rushed to the hospital where I was kept drugged for three months. Now, hold that thought and take just a second here. Take a break. I'm going to switch uh, to uh, some music. I'll be right back here. If you